Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be showing you all the books that I got for my birthday. So this past Monday was my birthday. I turned 29 and I feel very old suddenly. Uh, but since it was my birthday and everyone knows me so well, they got me lots of books, aka my mother got me books. Uh, so I have a short book haul and this will hopefully be the last book haul for a few months. I'm doing pretty well reading all my books from Christmas. Hopefully these also I'm able to read by the end of February. I'm not going to make it a rule to read by the end of January just because I have a lot of books to already read and it wouldn't be fair to me to um, say I can read all of them so quickly. So uh, most of these books are classics and some of them are dense books. So we'll see how well I do. I also have a couple of things, non bookish things that I got for my birthday to show. For example, I got these slippers from my husband and they are just the cutest, most comfortable slippers. And they have this like very cozy vintage look to them. So I love them. As you can tell today, I'm going for the 1940s. Uh, hairstyle it's slightly falling down because I wore it all day at work but uh I'm like 1940s themed today so uh th let's get into all the books that I got for my birthday I have I have eight books here so not that much all right so the first book is the hero of our time by Mikhail Lomontov L Lermontov Lermontov so he was a big like Russian classic poet, but he did write some novels as well. And this is one of the novels that he wrote. I don't know much about it, but he he died very, very young. He lived uh, pre the golden era of Russian literature that I think of like Dostoevsky uh, and Tolstoy wrote predominantly in the 1850s. He was writing in like the 1830s to 40s. He died when he was like 20 something. So he was very young when he died. He didn't really have the long career that Tolstoy or Dostoevsky had. But I'm very curious to read this book because every book of Russian literature, even if I don't necessarily love it, like Anna Karenina, I, I still see it as being just so beautifully written. So I hope I enjoy this as well. And it's a short book. And it's Penguin Classics. So the next one I got is another author that I have heard a lot about, but I've never read and it's Lost Illusions by Aurore de Balzac. So uh, Balzac was a French author from the early 1800s, I believe also early 1800s. And in fact, this would actually work for Around the World in 80 Days readathon for the week of um, reading French books. So maybe I'll try to add that to my TBR because I think we should be traveling to France. Actually, maybe it's the end of January or the beginning of February. I'm not sure. But so this book, um, I know nothing about. Uh, he's just an author that I've heard a lot about um, because he seems to balance between uh, classic literature as well as being a philosopher. Um, so I don't know how much, like I've heard him referenced a lot in other books that say, oh yeah, he's one of the best authors of all time, but I've never read him and I want to read him. Yeah. The next one um, is an adventure set of novels. And I've heard of the first one, I've never heard of the second one. And it's the Bourne trilogy by uh, Nordhoff and Hall, um, two male writers. So the first book is Mutiny on the Bounty, which is possibly the most famous one. And then you have Men Against the Sea and uh, Pitchcairn's Island. I know nothing about the first two. I I'm pretty sure I saw the mutiny on the bounty, which was a movie that came out like in the 1940s, they may have a newer remake that I don't know about. But it's basically a high seas adventure pirate novel. That's all I know about it. I do not remember the movie at all. It has been years since I saw it. Uh, but it's like a big adventure series that I remember um, hearing about when I was younger, and I never read it. And so I, I was very happy to get this for my birthday. All right, the next book is another book that I've been wanting to read for a long time. And I actually started it a couple years ago, and I just never finished it. And that's The Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton. He was a uh, mid 20th century Catholic author, a very predominant um, in the Catholic writer community. And he, this is his most famous work. It is very much a philosophy about how 
um, musing on things like heaven and hell and conversion and uh, coping with living in a more modern world while also being Catholic. So it's very much like a theological philosophy, I guess. Um, again, this has been on my TBR for a while. I've tried to read it and I've just never been able to. Um, so it's, it's a dense book because I remember struggling with it, but he was, um, I don't remember what order he joined, but he was a brother. Like he, he entered a, not cloister, because that's for girls, um, a monastery he was part of where he wrote a lot of his most famous works. And I believe he converted from being either a different faith or being an atheist. So his story is very interesting and I want to read more of his books, but this one is the one to start with, I've heard, because it's considered his best. All right, the next one I book, the next one I got purely because I can't say no to Asian books, and that is um, the importance of living by Lin Yu Tong. So, as far as I know, this is a more modern, modern as in like the 1940s, 1950s Chinese philosophy book. Um, looking back on the history of different Chinese philosophy. So he'll quote like Confucius, looks at different types of philosophies in China. Um, so like one section is on being mortal. The next one is on, on having strong muscles, um, on human dignity, on playful curiosity, the rise of human civilization. Um, on sitting in bed. So it's basically like looking at different philosophies of different areas of life um, through the lens of Chinese philosophy. So it looked very interesting. All right. And of course, because I can't make things easy for me, I have to get like a massive whopper of a book. And that is The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, Reich? Um, by William S. Schurer. So I believe it came out right after the fall of Nazi Germany. And for example, my copy was published in 1960. So I guess 15 years after the fall. Um, I'm not sure when the original copy was published, but uh, this is a book that I've wanted to read for a long time. Um, the Nazis are such a controversial a historical group and a political movement that because it's crazy how a lot of their ideologies you see within even like more modern ideologies and yet you know, it's concerning to say, well, a lot of ideologies have similar beliefs to them, but why did they go so wrong? You know, why did they completely lack morals and like create the con uh, concentration camps and try to take over all of Europe and even all parts of the world? Why did they think that they were like inherently better than the rest of us? And that is some certain things that I feel like a lot of people, a lot of civilizations and societies believe that they are better than the other. And so I think in studying the Third Reich and Nazi Germany, we can understand and stop it from happening again, in a sense. So history doesn't repeat itself. So yeah, this is a very book, big book to read. I, oh my gosh, it's like 1200 pages. Oof, great, great. All right, the next one is another history book, and that's on the Aztecs by Ginda Clindendine? Clint I, I don't know, but uh, it's about the Aztecs, obviously. It's weird because I have always loved learning about South America, South American like cultures, like the Mayans, the Aztecs, but I haven't actively studied them uh, in like history books. And I never had an opportunity in college to be able to, I never found like classes or any teachers that specialized in South American history. So I was never able to explore that in college as much as I did other different eras in history. So I'm really excited to read this book. And it seems like a pretty light, relatively light history novel um, because or not a history novel, a history nonfiction, um, compared to like the rise and fall of the Third Reich. That's going to be a nightmare to read. And the last one is actually a book that I'm already reading. I'm actually going to start it tomorrow. Um, and, and I already have a copy of this, but I saw this copy and it was just a beautiful vintage copy and it's Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott and I fell in love with just the look of this book so I 
this copy was published from the 1930s so it's not incredibly old and it's in kind of bad shape but I was just so impressed with the art in this book that I was like hey even if it ends up falling apart and I have to like cut out just the pictures it will be absolutely worth it because just the the beauty of the art within this book was just so impressive. Um, also, the other copy I own of Ivanhoe has very small um, writing. So I was thinking because this one is quite a bit bigger that maybe if, if I read physically Ivanhoe at all, I will read from this copy because I don't really care if it falls apart as much because it's already completely falling apart. It's like the spine is loose and I may do some research and see if I can fix it. Um, my, my Count Monte Cristo copy that I got for Christmas is also not in the best shape. So uh, I need to learn how to um, revitalize my books. So there are all the books that I got for my birthday. I'm really excited to read them all, even though these are definitely a lot denser than the books that I got for Christmas. Um, all the books I got for Christmas were like lighter, relatively lighter fictions, most of them. Um, you know, but besides the Aeneid and the Count of Monte Cristo, like all the books on that I received for Christmas were like lighter reads. Um, so th this pile is a lot more dense. So I'm hoping to focus on it mostly in February. Um, while I'm doing the uh, Around the World in 80 Days readathon, but we'll see how that goes. So, have you read any of these books? Do any of them look interesting to you? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!